Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Can we please listen to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening, Council is grateful to have Reverend Jonathan Bradford of Bethany Baptist Church here to pray with us. Pastor, welcome back to Council. Shall we pray? Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come this evening to say thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have made. God, we come now to say thank you for this city council meeting. And Lord, we want to invite you in this meeting that you will let love and peace be the order of the day. You are welcome in this place, and so come and have your own way. And now, God, remember our president, President Harding, and his staff, that you will crown them with knowledge and wisdom to facilitate this meeting. This we ask in your darling son. Let everyone say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Doran's Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to submit the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Cower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh -huh. uh, at this time, we'll go around the uh, dais for any um, resolutions or updates by members of council, starting with Councilman Brinkster. Uh, thank you, Council President. Just uh, another reminder, uh, applications are rolling in. Uh, but there is still um, plenty of opportunity for those that are interested in Accelerate Columbus, our program. Uh, just a refresher that this is, again, uh, 10 sub-programs that small businesses uh, and entrepreneurs can choose from uh, to help them in whatever stage of their business they are in. Um, if you are interested, uh, please go to columbus.gov slash accelerate to learn more. Or, and you can also go to the city's small biz hub. That's cbus, small b-i-z, hub.com to apply and find out more information. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Rosa Padilla. Thank you, Council President. I do have two announcements uh, this evening. First, um, I know that we are rounding out to spring, but uh, I just wanted to acknowledge we've had three major weather events this season. I just wanted to um, give a shout out to our snow warriors um, that were out there. I know that it's particularly difficult, especially around rush hour time, for us to get ahead of it, especially when we're a little surprised by it. But I did want to acknowledge the efforts of our um, snow warriors as they've taken us through the season and these three weather events. Uh, and just a reminder to everyone, um, if you Google Warrior Watch Columbus, Ohio, it will take you to our real 
real time map so you can see what streets have been plowed, when they've been plowed, when they've been treated, just in case, in the rare case of between now and spring, we do have another uh, a weather event. And I just also want to thank folks for their patience and uh, for looking out for each other during um, those events. Uh, secondly, um, I uh, wanted to uh, make sure that everyone knows that the ban on salary history or the salary history ban legislation goes into effect this Friday, March 1st. The ban on salary history inquiries prohibits Columbus employers from inquiring about a job applicant's current or previous salary. This legislation prevents employers from unfairly considering factors such as historical inequalities and biases in hiring decisions. It encourages employers to extend job offers based upon what the job seeker is worth today rather than the amount at which they've been valued at in the past or the lowest amount at which the employer can secure a worker to fill a particular role. This legislation applies to all employees, employers headquartered in Columbus or with a Columbus office or to any position for which the majority of the work will occur in Columbus. So if folks visit salaryhistoryband.com, they can go and there are uh, toolkits for both employee pers prospective uh, employees and for employers. And um, the legislation is there so folks can read through it. There are some exceptions. So again, I just encourage folks to go out uh, to the website and read the legislation. Um, and as always, if there are questions, folks can reach out to our office. And that is all for me this evening, Council President. Thank you, Council Member Rosa de Padilla. Council Member De Alcar. Enough <clears throat> second for me, thank you. Council Member Tim. Enough for me. Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council President Harden. I do believe that this is the last Monday of the month of February, which is Black History Month, so our last uh, Black History Month Black Artist Spotlight, um, as our theme has been around African Americans in the arts. Um, and I have been uh, setting out to highlight each week a Black artist who has helped build Columbus's art scene. So to continue uh, and end this series, I'd like to share the story of Mr. Elijah Pierce, born in 1892 in Mississippi. Elijah Pierce moved to Columbus with his wife in 1923 opening a barber shop on Long Street that included a separate art studio space. His preferred art style was wood carvings with his work being heavily inspired by biblical themes and stories. Though he began creating art in the early 1920s, it was not until the 1970s when he began to get acclaim for it, including being awarded National Heritage Fellowship by the National Endowment for the Arts in 1982. In 1984, Martin Luther King Jr., performing an art, cultural arts complex, opened the Elijah Pierce Gallery to recognize his work and artistic legacy. Um, just two weeks ago, City Council held um, its annual Black History Month celebration, where we also acknowledged uh, Columbus-based artists and um, had the opportunity uh, to have very uh, challenging conversations around arts in our community and how we can continue to move forward. If you are unable to be present, please check out the recast of it on YouTube. Thank you, Council President Harden. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Green. Thank you, President Harden. At this time, I would like to invite Executive Director Donovan Jones, Artistic Director uh, Jared Brayton Bullenbacher, and Assistant Artistic Director uh, Jordan Saul to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0036. Um, X-2024 to recognize and celebrate 34 years of the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus. Uh, since 1990, the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus has been a vehicle for fostering connection among the LGBTQIA plus community um, for all people who love to sing in non-auditioned inclusive environment that is open to people of all vocal talent, musical ability, sexual orientation, race, gender expression, religion, physical ability, age, or any other factor. Uh, the chorus has grown, as, grown as, in its 34 years to a consistent composition of well over 100 members, making it the largest tenor baritone bass vocal range chorus in Ohio. The Columbus Gay Men's Chorus was recently recognized for their more than three decades of accomplishments by the Ohio Music Educator Association, uh, which I was blessed to be able to uh, be present for and witness the amazing, amazing ensemble. Um, and they were, in fact, the very first ever LGBTQIA 
best chorus that has ever been commissioned to perform at the OMEA Annual National Conference. Uh, we are so pleased to honor the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus in their 30, 34th season. Um, and so now, um, before I present this resolution uh, officially, I would like to invite Donovan, Jared, or uh, Jordan to share a little bit more about the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus and the future of their work. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, Columbus City Council, we wanna just say how thankful and blessed and honored we are to be receiving this resolution today. It's really amazing to live in such a wonderful city. Uh, 34 years ago, we started by five individuals creating a safe space for gay males to sing and to do something that was not uh, related to sports or bars or to be out. And as we know, at that time, it was very difficult for people to be open with their identities as LGBTQ members. Since then, we've survived the HIV AIDS crisis. We've fought against Defensive Marriage Act and we have um, withstood against many hate crimes that have affected our community since then. Now we are in our 34th season, and not only are we a gay male chorus, but we are open to anyone that can sing in the tenor bass range, cis females, straight males, trans, non-binary, anybody who wants to sing with us, and we're so thankful for that. And we are very, very proud to be a part of the Columbus City and being um, in this vibrant community. We are also, at this point in time, very concerned about what is going on in the state of Ohio for individuals who are in our community, especially those who are trans and non-binary. And as I've said many times before, we will sing for those that are oppressed no matter who they are, but we will especially raise our voices for those who are non-binary and trans and are in our community. So as we look forward to the next 34, hopefully 90 years that we are in existence, we are very proud to not only be a chorus that has 100 members, but we now actually have over 150 active members at all time. So thank you so much for Columbus for being a wonderful home for us, and especially to Council Member Green for being at our uh, performance for OMEA. And of course, if you want more information, come to our website, www.cgmc.com, or come to one of our wonderful performances. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for the work that you do. I, um, I was incredibly moved uh, watching your performance the other day, and I'm, I'm ashamed to say that it was the first time that I'd had the opportunity um, to see the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus in action, and it was an absolutely moving performance, but I think more so than that, just the opportunity in the context against the backdrop of everything that is happening right now at the Ohio State House, um, where, uh, you know, our state legislators on the Republican side of the aisle are trying to strip away rights from people within the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, seeing this performance, raising your voices, increasing visibility of uh, people within the community, I think is just absolutely so important. Important, And we, um, we honor you today for that work over many, many decades um, and um, are excited to continue to support uh, you in this work as well. Um, do any of my colleagues have any other comments or questions? Councilmember, I would just be remiss not to thank the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus for um, partnering with us every year during Pride Month to help us kick off Pride Month and the lighting of City Hall. Um, it is one of the things that I think has helped grow the crowd of folks who uh, see uh, that City Hall lighting on that Monday night as one of the kickoffs for um, uh, our Pride Month. So just thank you uh, for the, part, the long partnership now uh, in that celebration and all you do in the community. Anything else? Um, seeing none, I move for adoption. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopted. All for me. That's all. Councilman Remy. Thank you very much, Council President. I just want to announce that we are excited to uh, bring up the Cleaner Columbus Annual Citywide Cleanup to kick off Earth Month. That is going to be on April 6th, and we'll look for more information. For information uh, at any time, go to cleanercolumbus.org. But we're excited to, as we look at some of the most dismal times in our city and March is one of the ugliest, uh, February and March, one of the ugliest times along our highway. So we're looking forward and our streets. So we're looking forward to making a difference. Thank you. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member White. Uh, well, uh, tonight we have um, 
I have the honor of honoring a Columbus man who is born and raised in our city, and his name is Mickey Tate. Some of you may know him as Mick, but he is a pillar of strength in our community, and we mean that literally and physically. Uh, would Mr. Uh, Mickey Tate come forward and his family? So as you can see, uh, Mick is a security officer here at City Hall, and if you have ever stopped to chat with him, you may have found out that he is actually a wor world record holder in bench pressing. He set the record for his age group at 41, and when you think about the training, and you think about the strength it takes to lift 650 pounds above your chest, that's impressive. And when I learned about his um, world record holding status that was intriguing and that was something to to be excited about but what I find even more remarkable is mixed strength in other areas of his life after finishing school and serving our country in the US Air Force Mick faced a pivotal moment in his life a time of grief and personal struggle following the loss of his father uh, in the face of adversity he made a courageous choice to confront his inner struggles and embark on a journey of self-improvement, refusing to let grief consume him as a young man grappling with his actions. Not only has Mickey served as a uh, father figure for his own children, his nephews, and his nieces, his dedication to mentorship and empowerment has touched the lives of countless young individuals in our community, instilling in them the values of resiliency, of hard work, and of perseverance. He'll, he'll tell you that there's never been a car parked in his garage it's always been a home gym for his family and for the youth that he mentors. Students from local football and basketball teams and even professional athletes come to Mickey's to train. He teaches kids to give their 100% how to hustle and how to get things done right. We are lucky to have a man like Mickey not just working here at the city, but uh, being a part of our community, a pillar of our community. Um, like I said, uh, it was the world record um, Holder got my attention. Um, what I learned about the man um, is why I asked uh, for this resolution tonight because of who you are and what you mean to this community. Um, I want to turn the podium over to you, uh, Mickey, just to say a few words and then open it up to my colleagues if they have any um, additional comments. But well, we recently, are. I just broke the world record for 65 to 69 in drug free uh, world championship in uh, Niagara Falls. I've been 352 pounds, no man my age has ever done that in the world. In this competition, uh, let's get motivated with Mick. I'm a personal trainer. Uh, I have 10 kids. I'm not used to taking, I'm used to giving. So this is kind of hard for me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was telling somebody back there, I hope I don't cry. Cause uh, you know, as you get old, you know, you cry over anything, right? So, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep it together up here, people. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to work for the city. Born and raised here, Douglas Elementary, mm -hmm. Franklin Junior High, Mohawk High School, two-time basketball city champ, point guard on those championship teams with a bunch of phenomenal guys. And I talk about that all the time. People are like, why are you always talking about high school? Because it's my life. Hmm. And we earned it, we deserve it, and I want to express it to everyone who we were, mm -hmm. you know, even at my age. So mm -hmm. it never dies. Mm -hmm. but, but lifting, uh, when I started, I was the weakest guy in the group, but I was an athlete, so I knew I would persevere. And I went from the weakest guy to the world record holder. And I don't do it for me, I do it for the children in my little Grove and South Linden and Southfield and all these young kids that come to my garage because say they work out with the world record holder on St. Clair Avenue. Mm. On St. Clair Avenue, you with the champion. And if I can do it, you can do it. It ain't where you live, it's how you living. Huh. And I appreciate President Harden, the mayor, definitely uh, uh, Miss Kathy, my director, Dwayne Thangs, uh, uh, all of them. Chad River, who gave me the job, and you know, took me 66 years to get a job at, at the city. <laughs> and I've been here all my freaking life, okay? <laughs> but guess what? It's one of the most wonderful jobs I ever had. I love it. I love seeing y'all every day. I love talking to y'all every day. I love sharing with y'all every day. All y'all are beautiful. You always got a smile on your face. You always treat me with all the respect in the world. And that's all a man can ask for. So I'm just happy to uh, celebrate the fact that y'all celebrate my victory. Hmm. 
You know, y'all celebrate my victory, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. It don't go unnoticed. You know what I'm saying? So get motivated. Hey. <laughs> Mick, Mickey, Mick. Stay up here. Are there any questions or comments? You all see why um, uh, we're doing this today. Uh, he has motivated me, too, as we walk past the uh, security desk. But again, it's the stories of all the other countless young people out there. And you shout out Southfield. You know, that's my heart, <laughs> um, that you are mentored and changed lives. And it just means the world. Councilman Bankston. No, I just want to say, um, Mick, thank you. And um, also want to say that, you know, knowing that you bench press six, over 600 pounds and still bench pressing over 300 makes me feel even more safe at City Hall, so I appreciate it. Uh, but also, I just wanted to throw this out there because you talked about your basketball career. So uh, JP in my office is in the Recreation and Parks League. Okay. And Mick also, in all of that he does, also has spare time to ref in that league as well. So he is through and through about Columbus and the development of uh, our residents. Uh, but I also wanted to say this. I think oftentimes when we think about public service, you think about the faces up here or the faces that we see along the hallways. Uh, but what makes our city so great mm. is people like you, Mick, who are behind the scenes, making the city run, uh, and really, you know, again, tapping into that, uh, I'm sorry, pouring into that next generation. So thank you for all that you do. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you around City Hall. Now I'm going to come get in that gym with you so I can get up there a little bit. I need to. Fuck it, man. All okay. Man. Come on. Come <laughs> one, come on. Well, Mickey, I, you know, I always enjoy talking with you. And I think, you know, if you didn't know, this guy trains. He's a who's who of trainers in town. So he's got a lot of clientele that he helps out every day. So if you need a little help at the gym, like I do, <laughs> we know where to go. But we appreciate you and we appreciate uh, just having a great conversation with you as you look out for the rest of us. It really means a lot. And, and uh, thank you and congratulations on that win. Hey, no need for anyone out there not being fit. You got me here. Come get it. Come get okay. it. <laughs> With that, uh, is there a motion to approve? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ock, Howard, Dorans, Favor Green, Remy White, President Arden. I have a two for tonight. I have two resolutions uh, this evening. Um, I also want to recognize a, uh, another truly dedicated public servant. Would uh, Mr. Don Brown and anyone here to celebrate uh, Mr. Brown uh, come up to, uh, to the podium? Don Brown has given more than 50 years of public service to our community. He's helped our county running through services uh, through service as the Franklin County Administrator and Finance Director. But most recently, he led the Franklin County Convention Facilities Authority. If you ever have been to a conference or event downtown, there's a good chance it's because of Don Brown. He's also made sure that when people come to those conferences from out of town, that they get uh, to experience our local culture, investing in local art across the convention center and more. You can also thank Don if you get a chance to stay in our beautiful new Hilton Hotel downtown or catch a game at Huntington Park. Don. <clears throat> you have truly been a giant in our community, and we could not let you uh, uh, put a period behind 50 years of service uh, to this community without bringing you here to celebrate um, you. Um, you have certainly earned what comes next, and we're so, so grateful um, for our, all that you have meant to our, Colum to our community, um, and even still um, the mentorship that you're providing, the work that you're continuing to do. Uh, in supporting the direction of our city moving forward. So thank you, thank you, thank you, congratulations. And with that, I will turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, President Arden, members of council. It's been a pleasure uh, serving this community, helping the community build out the last nine years, build out a, a world-class uh, convention center uh, and a convention hotel so that we could uh, draw more and more visitors to our community. Uh, also, I had the pleasure of serving as county administrator, as you mentioned. Uh, during that time, we built a, a world-class ballpark uh, and an animal shelter and a courthouse in the community. So we've uh, tried to give back to the community uh, by developing uh, facilities that, that serve the community. Uh, what you may not know is 50, over 50 years ago, I started my public service career in City Hall. 
uh, uh, working for Mayor Jack Sensenbrenner in that administration. Uh, and uh, so I, for, for the city's support then and now, I'm very grateful and for the opportunity to serve our community. Do any of my colleagues have, uh, Councilmember Remy? Donna, we've, we've worked a long time together. We, it's great to see Hilton 2.0 get finished, completed, and of course, welcome so many people. The, the state's only 1,000 plus hotel, room hotel. Um, we are appreciative for the commitment that you made to this community and, and helping to build tourism here in Columbus, Ohio, to be, you know, uh, for somebody that grew up and graduated in the area and knowing that at one point in time, we, when we said Columbus, that was usually had to have a qualifier, Columbus, Georgia, Columbus, Indiana, it didn't, you know, you had to say Columbus, Ohio, but today Columbus stands alone and it's because of your dedication and work that has made a difference. And so we appreciate you and look forward to seeing what's next. Thank you, Council Member. If there are further, no further comments, their motion to approve. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Day Off, Coward, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Are there any comments by our elected officials, uh, city auditor, city attorney's office, city clerk's office? Uh, are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from con the consent agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of third day legislation by the clerk? Is there a second? second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, De Alcower, Dorrance, Favor Green, Remy, Weich, President Hart. Thank you. With the clerk now reading the record, ordinance of numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading. Finance and Governance Committee, ordinances 373, 424, 426, 427, 428, 438, 461, 482, and 508-2024. Economic Development Small and Minority Business Committee, ordinance 481-2024. Public Service and Transportation Committee, ordinances 403, 449, 494, 2024 neighborhoods recreation and parks committee ordinance 507 2024 housing homelessness and building committee ordinances 361 531 532 533 536 552 553 2024 health human services and equity committee ordinance 342 2024 public safety and criminal justice committee Ordinances 307 and 312 2024, Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, Resolution 29X 2024, Ordinances 176, 217, 232, 253, 295, 297, 305, 322, 323, 332, 340, 359, 362, 369, 385, 396, 397, 406. 421, 450, 471, and 519 2024. Rules and policy, oh, excuse me, zoning committee ordinances 546, 561 2024. Also, variances in that committee 566 and 570 2024. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have one speaker on the first reading portion of the, the agenda. Mr. Nate Wilkins is here to speak on Housing Ordinance 0553-2024. Ms. Wilkins, welcome back to Council. Sixteen twelve Arlington Avenue, Mr. Los Angeles Wilkins. Um, I'm going to be speaking in against the letter FR 210553-2024. Now, I will be speaking in against of this property is because it seems like 15, uh, hold on, um, 1152 Minnesota Avenue, 1153 Minnesota Avenue. 
The reason why I'm against this, it seems like Habitat is all over South London, North London, Malagrogan, wherever it may, the case may be. A while here, we are talking about this property here. And I believe that property is 1152, if I ain't mistaken. Here we are, we are talking. But the thing that we are like in need of affordable housing. I just want to talk on this briefly for a minute. Here's this property owner here. And I don't understand why that a resident has to live right next door to this. And here, we are paying tax dollars to live right next door to our burnt structure that's still standing for idolized for years and years and years. If this person is paying over $1,000, why not slash his mortgage or property tax in half for this? Let me say something else here. Speaking of 1152 Minnesota Avenue, here we are in 2014, a property that said vacant and abandonment, not idolized, not occupied. Turn this over here, we have a vacant land. What I don't understand here, why the city cannot do anything different when it comes to vacant and abandonment properties that sit idolized and burnt and torched. Here we go again. Behind my home here is a 100-year-old property. A 100-year-old property. And what I'm talking about here is 1621, Agenda C Avenue. I cried to blue multiple times when 1621 was still standing and rotted away. To back this crime issue, you can create jobs to have people put down their guns and to give a young person the opportunity to rehab these homes for less than $27 an hour so they can get out of life of crime. And here, that's what we need to start doing and start thinking outside the box. This is an annual opportunity that this city has right now. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilkins. And the ordinance that uh, Mr. Wilkins is speaking on is um, part of our land bank uh, land reutilization re 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 uh, program. Director, do you have anything else to say on that? It's, it's, to me, seems like a pretty standard transfer, but we we'll want you to follow up with Mr. Wilkins if, uh, on the concerns he raised. Yes, Council President Harden, uh, we will do that. Uh, with regards to this one piece of legislation, this is to transfer the property to Habitat so they can uh, redevelop that for some affordable housing. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions or comments on the first reading portion of the agenda? Hearing none, um, the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those into the record? Resolutions of Expression 40X, 35X, and 43X-2024. Finance and Governance Committee, Ordinances 209, 324, 372, 375, 378, 379, 381, 382, 383, 423, 432, 444, 447, 463, 510, and 525-2024, 20, Economic Development and Small and Minority Business Committee, Ordinance 516-2024, 20, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 491-2024, 20, Housing, Homelessness, and Building Committee, Ordinances 360, 433, 543, 554-2024, 20, Health, Human Services, and Equity Committee, Ordinances 161, 282, 416, 441, 446, 451, 452, 454, 480, 542 2024. Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee, Ordinances 346, 351, 434, 435, 466, 486 2024. Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, Ordinances 185, 252, 259, 267, 271, 402, 410, 420, 437, 
and 464-2024. In the Rules and Policy Committee, we have appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0046, 47, 50, and 51. Dash 2024. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any questions or comments on the consent portion of the agenda? Hearing none, either there is a motion to, for approval. Mm -hmm. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Consent agenda is passed. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30 day postponed and emergency legislation. First committee to come before council is the Finance and Governance Committee, chaired by Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, President Harden. First up tonight in the Finance and Governance Committee, uh, for second reading, we have Ordinance 3011-2023 to make appropriations for the 12 months ending December 31, 2024, for each of the several uh, object classes for which the City of Columbus has to provide from the monies known to be in the treasury of said City of Columbus in the fund known as the General Fund during the said 12 months from the collection of all taxes and from other sources of revenue in the amount of $1,194,700,000 and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance and the following ordinance uh, are, uh, are two of three ordinances that make up the city's operating budget for this calendar year. Uh, as we mentioned earlier this morning at uh, a press conference regarding the operating budget pa uh, press conference, um, uh, record this, the statute requires excuse me, that these two ordinances appear on an agenda following the addition of amendments. Uh, so tonight I will be postponing both of these ordinances uh, to the March 4th Council meeting. Uh, we are really excited and today had the opportunity to announce uh, Council's amendments to the operating uh, budget this year and really feel like that this budget reflects uh, our priorities as a Council. Uh, as stated, there will be opportunity for comment between now and passage on March 4th. Uh, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none at this time, I first move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Doran's favorite green, Remy Weich, President Harden. Amended. I now move to postpone this ordinance to March 4th council meeting. Is there a second? second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Doran's favorite green, Remy Weich, President Harden. Postponed. Thank you. Next in the Finance and Governance Committee, we have Ordinances 3012-2023 to make appropriations and transfers for the 12 months ending December 31, 2024 for the other funds for various divisions to authorize the city auditor to make transfer as may be necessary and to declare an emergency. Seeing no questions or comments from my colleagues, I first move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Clerk, just call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Hart. Amended. I now move to postpone this ordinance to the March 4th council meeting. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Hart. Postponed. Next, we have Ordinance 0187-2024 to establish a new authorized strength ordinance for various divisions in the City of Columbus to be consistent with the adopted 2024 budget to repeal Ordinance 3525-2023 and to declare an emergency. This uh, ordinance simply gives the city the ability to adjust maximum staffing levels for various departments and divisions to allow departments to meet the staffing needs associated with this year's operating budget. This piece of legislation is contingent upon the passage of the previous two ordinances uh, as we previously discussed. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, uh, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0374 2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management to enter into contract with the Greater Columbus Arts Council for the purpose of distributing 2024 admission tax proceeds to provide funding for grants and artists and art organizations that serve as the foundation for the city's profile as a vibrant, inclusive city to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of proceeds from the Creation, Innovation, and Inclusion Fund anticipated to be $12,140,000 and to declare an emergency. Um, and as I go read through this uh, background of this ordinance, I'm going to have uh, Tom Katzenmeyer and uh, our team. Oh, he's already waiting in the wings. There you go. Um, the Greater uh, Columbus Arts Council 
more commonly known as GCAC, is our city's premier art advocacy organization and is responsible for a multitude of arts-related grants, policy, and strategy. Tonight on the agenda, we have three ordinances, two on second reading and one that we just passed on the consent that provide GCAC with annual appropriations for various funds that go for, towards artist support, art infrastructure, programming, and more. This ordinance and ordinance 0382-2024 on the consent agenda appropriate admission tax proceeds to support investment in sports venues, cultural arts venues, performing, performance arts venues, artists, and art organizations for 2024. Uh, with us tonight, we have Tom Katzenmeyer, who is our fearless leader, uh, president and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council, to speak about the importance of this appropriation and really the agenda uh, that we should be expecting out of GCAC this year. Uh, Mr. Katzenmeyer, Thank you, yours. Council Member Bankston and Council President Harden, all the members of Council. I also want to thank Emmanuel and Lourdes for your long service on our board. Mm -hmm. And I want to recognize Jamie Goldstein, who's back there in the gallery with me. We are incredibly grateful to the Council for this support and the Mayor and all of city leadership for investing in the years of hard work that helped us secure the culture fee for Columbus. We stalled a little bit by the pandemic, but it has finally, we're finally starting to see the fruits of this effort. So last year was our 50th anniversary. We awarded more out into the community than ever, as well as how we could continue to imagine the future for the city in the arts. I wanna highlight a key of the few investments from arts for artists, arts organizations in our community last year. First, funding to organizations increased significantly once more thanks to the strong revenues from the culture fee. We awarded $10.5 million to 22 operating support organizations. That includes now three organizations that are receiving more than a million dollars from us. So COSI, CAPA, and the Columbus Museum of Art. Just over 800,000 in general support to 16 organizations and 63 organizations received project support from GCAC totaling more than $710,000. And for the first time, we awarded 1.15 million to eight arts organizations to support building maintenance and improvements. That's the CapEx money that we are allowed to award under the ticket fee that's collected at Nationwide. Um, Funds for artists, again, reached historic highs. 1,123 artists received more than $1.8 million in non-competitive grants. So again, we funded 1,123 artists last year. That will increase again this year. Our grants and community engagement staff hosted multiple sessions, connecting with more than 500 people in the arts community these interactive sessions last summer helped us restructure our funding for artists for 2024 to better serve the wide variety of disciplines and level of experience in our community. In our ongoing efforts towards more diversity, equity, and inclusion, we launched a community ambassador program called the GCAC Navigators. It's a group of 18 artists who receive a modest stipend from us to spend the year reaching out to artists in the community. They are multidisciplinary and multilingual. It is an incredibly richly diverse group of people. They connect with their peers. They teach them how to receive GCAC resources. And this year we've increased, increased that to 26 navigators. So we now have 26 navigators out in the community talking about the arts and teaching artists how to apply for money from us. We have a new festival director. Uh, Alexis Perone and a new coordinator at the helm. Uh, we've embraced all the new development at the Sayota Peninsula. Last year we had the patron party at the Junto. I think a lot of you were there. It was the first day that the hotel had opened, um, as well as activities that included live painting, twice as many hands-on activities for children and families. The event this year is June 7th through 9th. Mark your calendars now. We will be back at the Cultural Arts Center for the patron party on June 7th. So not to be missed, the launch party for the summer. We also dive deeply into public art. You're very familiar with this through research and investment. With the support from you and from the county commissioners, we launched Greater Columbus, Greater Art, 
an initiative to develop the first comprehensive public art plan for our community. We hired Lord Cultural Resources to guide that 14-month initiative. We led, have already led a five-month public outreach effort that engaged more than 2,000 citizens. This work continues. The final plan will be presented in June of 2024, so just in a couple months. We also launched a new mural assistant grant program with funding of nearly $200,000 for more than 20 murals in the community in such places as the Mid-Ohio Food Collective, uh, where there's one on the Norton Road facility, the Boys and Girls Club of Central Ohio, and Zora's House. So we did 20 last year. We have budgeted for 31 this year. So with your funding, we are able to do 31 new murals, and that call is open now. So if you know muralists, uh, the pay for a muralist is $5,000 for that, for those projects. We also held our second big arts night with a celebration for our 50th anniversary. It was also the 50th anniversary of hip hop. It was a night of awards, music, dance, visual arts, and drag at the Southern Theater and Western, Great Western Hotel, Great Western Great Southern Hotel. We celebrated $198,000 in awards to individuals including $125,000 in Artist Elevated Awards, supported through private funds that we've raised in our endowments at the Columbus Foundation. That event is October 24th this year, so mark your calendars for that. And this year, we're going to do seven Elevate Awards at $25,000 each. We'll do one in each of seven disciplines. So that night, we'll give out seven $25,000 awards to local artists. We've rebuilt um, the film program and the film website and our own website. We're also doubling the amount of money given in film grants this year. Um, the, those programs will open up March 1st. So that's where we are. It's an exciting time. Um, we're proud to be involved with all of you in this work. We're grateful to the funding. I think back on where we were 12 years ago. We were at the bottom of the list in terms of our peer cities, public funding for the arts in our peer cities, and now we are at or near the top of that list because of your support through the bed tax, the culture fee, and the monies we get from Franklin County. So thank you. I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Tom, for uh, your leadership and, and steadfast advocacy in the art space. And uh, as you said, I think it was um, the forward thinking of this council uh, and under the leadership of President Hardin, um, who put that fee in place uh, to make sure that we could adequately fund our arts community and have a dedicated source uh, outside of income tax to be able to do that so that those that are coming to our city and sharing uh, uh, or celebrating in our city also give back to it and back to its artists. Um, and so I think it goes without saying that Columbus truly does make art and art makes Columbus. Um, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Council Member Barroso de Padilla. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, GCAC's leadership. I think in, um, especially at, at, clearly with all of the plans that we've done, but especially supporting artists, that artists can see a way that they can um, truly live their passion. And I think, um, you know, art transcends culture, art heals, art brings people together. When their art isn't always words, it is art that makes you feel something, makes you think something. And so the fact that this community really values who makes art, how we make art, and that it is accessible to everyone in our community is such, uh, uh, it's what makes cities great. It would, it's what makes our neighborhoods great. And that feeling has been uh, in our DNA since the city was founded. And we've seen that throughout our history in the many different neighborhoods and the many different corners of the city. And so um, I think, again, living our values, we talked about that in our press conference earlier today, that we were able to invest um, and ensure that uh, the arts are at the forefront and there is a way to continue to support those efforts, um, especially 
especially through folks who are going to come to our city who they leave a little something here, right? Um, and uh, that we're able to um, support our community that way. So I just wanna say thank you again. It is an honor to serve as a board member on GCAC's board uh, with so many folks in the community who are doing great things for the community and for our residents. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Ramey. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm just excited to see this number continue to increase. That means that this city is you know, having successful events and continues to grow. Our commitment to the arts and what, what we're seeing you know, with such a great new American refugee and immigrant population that's coming in, they, there are new artists discovered every single day. They're coming from all, all different sides of the world and they're coming right here to Columbus, Ohio and to be able to support that. I'm just excited to serve on, I think the best board, uh, you know, that there is out there and to, you know, work through this public arts, you know, uh, study and, and look what's next as we think about investing in the city and making this place welcoming for all and, and the art is really what brings that together and so thank you for your leadership it's always a pleasure and, and it's exciting to see how much money that we get to share with our artists all right, all right. thank you tom again uh with that i move for passage Second. clerk please call the roll bangston barosa de padilla de all coward doran's favorite green remy white President Harden. Passed. Thank you. And uh, companion ordinance with that, we have ordinance 0387-2024 to authorize the Director of Department of Finance and Management to enter into contract with the Franklin County Convention Facilities Authority for the purpose of distributing 2024 emission tax proceeds from the Facility Stabilization Fund for the purposes of infrastructure investment in nationwide arena to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of an estimated $3,250,000 from the Facilities Stabilization Fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance provides emission tax proceeds to the Franklin County Convention Facility Authority for the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of nationwide arena, one of the city's most pivotal entertainment and sports venues. Ongoing investment in the arena is a key to our strategy that allows Columbus to remain competitive in the entertainment space nationally. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's favorite green, Remy White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. And next we have Ordinance 0417 2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to contract with Experience Columbus for marketing services to increase tourism and convention business and strengthen the image of the city of Columbus, Ohio to authorize the expenditure of $12,878,000 from the Hotel Motel Excise Tax Fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, the Hotel Motel Tax uh, proceeds are collected by the city of Columbus for the purposes of promoting the city as a destination site for tourism and convention activities and for fostering and sustaining a broad array of programming, including concerts, festivals, art exhibits, and vocational opportunities. The Greater Columbus community welcomes 49.6 million visitors each year. Those visitors provide 6.6 .6 billion in direct spending to our local, local businesses. Furthermore, the tourism sector supports nearly 75,000 jobs in Columbus and Franklin County, accounting for approximately one out of every 15 jobs in Franklin County. This ordinance and the following ordinance dis distributes uh, these proceeds to experience Columbus and GCAC so that we can continue to invest in the promotion of the city as a tourism destination as well as the programming that our community offers. Uh, these efforts sustain our local culture and identity and provide significant economic benefits to our local economy. Experience Columbus is our city's promoter, marketer, and seller of Columbus as a destination both regionally and nationally and I'll go a step further and say they don't simply also encourage folks to visit here, uh, but if you've seen any of their work, it's really encouraging people to come and stay here. Uh, so it's even bigger than just that one-time visit. Uh, with us tonight in Chambers, we have Brian Ross uh, from Experience Columbus here to speak about the importance of these funds and all the work that Experience Columbus is doing this year. Brian? I'm actually going to introduce Linda with oh. uh, the Greater Columbus Sports Commission. She'll kick us off. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Madam Thank you so much. To, I'm so happy to be here today and appreciate all the support that we get from you year in and year out. We work alongside Experience Columbus in advancing the travel economy. Our mission 
is to rally Columbus to compete and win sporting events, providing a singular athlete and fan experience, and positively impacting our image, our economy, and our lifestyle. Since 2002, the Greater Columbus Sports Commission has brought over 600 new sporting events to Columbus, along with working with many of the annual events that are here year in and year out. Some wins for 2023, including 41 new events that came to the community. The year started with the announcement of the U.S. Figure Skating Championships coming to Columbus and ended the year hoisting the trophy for the MLS championship game. Leading industry publication, Sports Business Journal, ranked Columbus 26th out of 300 cities for the, some, one of the best cities in America for sports. We sold close to 60,000 tickets uh, for the NCAA Men's March Madness. We were the first city in over 30 years to host the men and the women on the same weekend in Columbus. Our Community Cup had the most participants ever, and we also had generated 137,000 plus hotel room nights for events in the future. Looking ahead, we already kicked off the year with figure skating championships in January with record crowds the best since 2018. We also saw some sellout sessions for during that time. In March, we will be hosting the NCAA Division III Women's Basketball Championships. In July, we will host the 2024 MLS All-Star Game. And we also will have championships with USA Fencing, USA Volleyball, and several others. We're very excited. We just announced with the Columbus Blue Jackets in Ohio State that the NHL Outdoor Stadium Series will be here in March of 2025. So very happy to be here and appreciate all the work that you do on our behalf. So thank you. Brian's up next. Thank you, Linda. And uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, President uh, Hardin, uh, Council Member Bankston, all of City Council. Uh, my name is Brian Ross. I am President and CEO of Experience Columbus, and we're honored to be here uh, to show our gratitude for your investment and your support in this great industry. The travel economy is vital to Columbus. Tourism fuels local, the local economy, employees, residents, generates revenues and provides human services, housing resources, supports local arts programs, and raises the Columbus brand. Awareness. Experience Columbus is the destination marketing organization for Columbus dedicated to growing the visitor spend and enhancing the visitor experience. Council member Banks that did a great job of going through our numbers, but I believe they're important enough. We're going to hit them again. Um, we have uh, close to 50 million visitors that come through Columbus on an annual basis. They spend just under $7 billion. I like that better than $6.6 .6 billion. So they spend under just under $7 billion, support 75,000 jobs, which is one in every 15 jobs in Franklin County. However, Visitor spending also saves $1,400 in taxes per every household in Franklin County. The number of visitors has continued to grow. As a matter of fact, year over year, we're up 16%. This weekend, we're going to be welcoming this small little group called the Arnold Sports Festival. They'll have over 100,000 individuals. Uh, you're going to have 20,000 athletes from 80 different countries in our community, and we'll also use over 8,000 room nights. So we're excited about that. In 2023, we celebrated record success. I'd like to go through a few highlights um, so that we can share some of our major initiatives for this year. In 2023, we hosted 400, I'm sorry, 342 groups that are meetings, trade shows, or sporting events. That's a 247% increase year over year. Two of the biggest and most influential groups that the entire city came together to welcome and make their event memorable were PCMA Convening Leaders 2023, which was in January. We had over 3,300 attendees. And I'll give you a little perspective. We went to San Diego this year for the same meeting they had 3,800 attendees. So coming to Columbus is still a tremendous uh, opportunity. Over 4.2 billion, I'm sorry, $4.2 million in direct visitor spend and the potential to bring hundreds of millions of dollars in economic impact to our community over the next decade. The other was the US Conference of Mayors. 
which resulted in an estimated $1.5 million in direct visitor spend. We worked with City Council and Council Member Bankston and launched the new Minority Business Program, which provided free year-long Experience Columbus partnership and opportunities for marketing, exposure to local minority businesses. We secured over 100 minority businesses. Again, thank you, Council Member Bankston. We also conducted a community-wide perception study for the first time since 2017. To better understand how key audiences, including residents, visitors, and meeting professionals, perceive Columbus. The study found that 92% say tourism benefits our community. We produced several marketing campaigns to reach visitors, including spring, summer, and holiday promotions. And finally, bed tax collections. We hit a record in 2023 in bed tax collections at $55 million. That's $5 million than our past record, which was in 2019. Today, we're here and voting on ordinance to give our organization funding from the Hotel Motel Excise Tax Fund. So I'd like to share a few of these initiatives that the funding will go towards and are vital in doing what we do, what we do selling, marketing, and promoting Columbus to visitors who come here for leisure trips, sporting events, uh, business travel, and many are return visitors that even become residents. Looking ahead, we will secure, continue to secure national headlines and awards for Columbus through the hard work of our public relations team, which pitches and places earned media stories and awards for Columbus that drive awareness and positive attention to our city. Examples of major stories we secured for Columbus in 2023 includes headlines in Forbes, Essence, USA Today, Travel and Leisure, Good Housekeeping, and many more. Our, all, our team also coordinated city, the citywide push to get Columbus chefs nominated and restaurants nominated for the prestigious James Beard Award. We are also proud that two chefs are on the semi uh, finalist list and fire the new restaurant in the Hilton was just named one of the top, top restaurants in the US by USA Today, one of 47 in the country. This year we will also launch a new brand campaign in collaboration with the Columbus Partnership, Columbus Downtown Development Corporation, Franklin County, and the City of Columbus. The findings from last year's perception study will inform this work. We're also looking forward to a record-breaking year in citywide conventions. Those are very large conventions that come into our community. We're going to have over 40 this year. The previous record was 36. Um, and that will add an additional 95,000 room nights in the downtown Columbus this year. So, what I'd like to say is uh, we appreciate all that you do for us. We're here to thank you and make sure that uh, we continue to showcase this tremendous and inclusive and forward-thinking community that we call Columbus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian and, and Linda, for uh, your leadership. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Uh, I will just say that next March, if the weather is anything like this, I may actually go to that outdoor soccer, uh, hockey game in March. You know, it's really nice out. Um, with that, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barroza de Padilla, De Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Thank you both again. Uh, next, we have uh, Ordinance 0418-2024 to authorize the Director of Department of Finance and Management to enter into contract with the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Inc., for the purposes of fostering and sustaining arts and culture services that enrich the Columbus community and to authorize the expenditure of $8,781,000 from the Hotel Motel Excise Tax Fund in accordance with Section 371.02 of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. As previously mentioned, this ordinance provides hotel motel tax revenue uh, to GCAC 
to reinvest back into the arts ecosystem. Uh, seeing no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal Coward, Doran's favorite green, Remy Weich, President Harden. Passed. And we just have one more ordinance in the Finance uh, and Governance Committee, Ordinance 0484-2024, to authorize the city treasurer to modify its contract for banking services with Huntington Merchant Services to authorize the expenditure of $2,242,500 and to declare an emergency. This ordinance simply allows the city treasurer to extend its contract with Huntington Bank to May 31st, 2025 to, conti to, to continue providing uh, banking services necessary for the daily operations of business activities conducted by the city. This ordinance is contingent upon the passage of the 2024 budget. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Uh, thank you, Council President. May I move to the Economic Development and Small Minority Business Committee? Please. Uh, tonight in the Economic Development and Small Minority Business Committee, we have Ordinance 0389-2024 to dissolve the Enterprise Zone Agreement with EX2 Investment LTD and Car Supply Co., and to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to notify as necessary the local and state tax authorities. Uh, as stated in the title, this ordinance is a dissolution of a previously approved economic development agreement between the city and the listed entity. For those who are unfamiliar uh, with our economic development process, the City of Columbus Tax Incentive Review Council, or more commonly known as the TURC, meets annually to review all of the city's property tax abatements and tax incentive financing districts. Uh, as part of the process, the TURC contacts all entities whose reporting indicates that they will not meet their commitment to retain uh, an abatement. Entities that have been contacted by the TURC regarding issues with their commitments have the option to voluntarily dissolve their agreements. Uh, this particular agreement uh, was recommended by the TURC uh, to go back and refine those numbers, uh, and the applicant uh, um, made us aware that they would not be able to meet those job numbers. Therefore, we are dissolving uh, their, um, uh, their incentive. Director Stevens, do you want to speak more uh, to this? And uh, again, want to point out to folks that uh, when we talk about any types of incentives, uh, that we do take this seriously and that there are mechanisms in place that we monitor uh, that type of activity. Director Stevens. Yeah, thank you, uh, President Hardin, Chair Banks, and members of council. Uh, there's a level of accountability for all our incentive deals. It's really important as we work with a company that makes an investment and makes commitment to job growth that they meet that commitment. Um, while unfortunately the job growth numbers weren't hit, this company did go ahead and make the two plus million dollar investment into the project. So with this dissolution of the um, abatement, the community will start benefiting from the property taxes that are generated from that new investment. Absolutely. And, and Director, just to clarify that <coughs> that property value is higher now uh, because of that capital investment. Th that's correct. It's uh, significantly higher. And, you know, instead of waiting the 10 years to see for the community benefit, it will be realized immediately. Thank you, uh, Director. And I want to also thank all of the staff that are involved in the annual Turk. Uh, a lot of work that goes into that, a lot of follow up. And again, us as a city, uh, making sure that we're holding folks accountable um, that receive those incentives from the city. Um, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. And that is all I have in my committees this evening, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee to come before Council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee, chaired by Councilman Barosa de Padilla. Thank you, President Harden. I have three ordinances today in public service and transportation. The first is 0320-2024 to authorize the city attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept the remaining fee, simple and lesser real estate necessary to timely complete the pedestrian safety court right road sidewalks refugee to Groves Road project, project number 5901050-10048, and to authorize an expenditure of $14,901 from the Streets and Highways General Obligation Bond Fund. This ordinance installs sidewalks along Courtright Road from Refugee to Groves Road on the far east side, just south of I-70, along Mason Run River. 
The city will be acquiring three parcels of real estate to complete the project. Council has already passed an ordinance to acquire the necessary real estate. However, the city attorney has been unable to either locate or agree with some of the real estate owners in good faith regarding the amount of just compensation. This ordinance relies on state and local law to determine the fair market value of these parcels. And based on that determination, the parcels will be purchased for $14,901. I'm um, very excited to see a shared use path along that way and more sidewalks going in. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barroza de Padilla, J. Alcauer, Doran's Favor Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Uh, next is Ordinance 0370-2024 to amend the 2023 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the transfer of cash and appropriation within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to authorize the Director of Public Service to expend up to $10 million from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund relative to the roadway improvements I-7071 South East Freeway Project and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the appropriation of an expenditure of up to $10 million for the I-7071 South and East Freeway project and to support construction, utility relocations, and construction services for the project. The project, also known as Downtown Ramp Up, which folks can Google that, and you can see the various phases and which phase we are currently in as it pertains to the 7071 uh, freeway projects, consists of several phases. Cum uh, culminating in various improvements to the 7071 corridor, downtown Columbus, including reconstruction and widening portions of I-70 eastbound, westbound, between 4th Street and Miller Avenue, and resurfacing portions of I-70 and 71. Construction began in the spring of 2019. It's expected to continue at least until 2026. The estimated cost to complete the project is $1.4 billion, which will be funded by a combination of fate, federal, federal and local funds. This is our portion of the project. We are still within budget, but we know that there has been some increased costs since we, when we first spec'd the project. So uh, do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal Cower, Doran's Favor Green, Remy White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. And uh, for the final ordinance this evening is a little bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Bear with me. 0472-2024 to authorize the transfer of funds within the East Broad Commercial TIF Fund to transfer funds from each of the Lucent Incentive District TIF Fund and the East Broad Dominion TIF Fund to the Lucent Incentive District TIF Capital Fund and the East Broad Dominion TIF Capital Fund, respectively, to appropriate funds within the Lucent Incentive District TIF Fund, East Broad Dominion TIF Fund, Lucent Incentive Incentive District TIF Capital Fund and the East Broad Dominion TIF Capital Fund and the East Broad Commercial TIF Capital Fund to authorize the interim director of the Department of Public Service to enter in the contract with Truco Construction Company for the Roadway Westbourne Avenue Extension Project to authorize the expenditure of $8,665,126.22 from the various TIF funds and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes a contract with Truco Construction Company for the Westbourne Avenue Extension Project for construction, construction administration, and inspection services. The contract includes the improvement of approximately 0.13 miles of Westbourne Avenue west of Taylor Station Road by resurfacing and widening it to add a southbound right lane uh, turn lane and the approximate one or point. 58 mile extension of Westbourne Avenue between Taylor Station Road and Blossom Field Boulevard. The improvements of the extension include full depth pavement, new curb, gutters, sidewalk drives, storm sewer system, shared use path, signage, water line, tree plantings, and roadway lighting. Additionally, the improvement includes a roundabout and a placement of 0.22 miles of a new alignment called Carina Drive, south from the roundabout, including improvements such as those previously mentioned. Uh, another good, exciting project that's including and taking into account uh, roadway safety for uh, our folks, no matter how you travel the streets. So do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal Cower, Dorrance, Faber Green, Remy White, President Harden. 
Thank you, and that's all for me and my committees this evening. Come before council is the Health and Human Services and Equity Committee, chaired by Councilmember Green. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Sorry. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, tonight in the Health, Human Services, and Equity Committee, we have uh, four ordinances that are on second reading. The first one is ordinance number 0414-2024 to authorize the Board of Health to enter into initial contracts with the following qualified vendors, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, Equitas Health Collaborative Research, LLC, Heart of Ohio Family, Health Centers, the Research, Research Institute at Nationwide Children's Hospital, the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and Columbus Neighborhood Health Center, DBA Primary One Health, to authorize the Board of Health to modify those contracts if portions of previously appropriated and unencumbered funds are unused, and reallocate unused funds amongst the initial vendors without the need for additional legislation for the Ryan White Part A HIV Care Grant Program for the provision of services allowable under the grant for persons with HIV or AIDS in Central Ohio to authorize the expenditure of $2,377,965 from the Health Department Grants Fund to pay the cost thereof to waive applicable provisions of Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. The Ryan White Part A program provides critical services to individuals living with HIV in Central Ohio. Services like outpatient ambulatory medical care, early intervention services, medical and non-medical case management services, medical transportation, mental health, housing services, um, and emergency financial assistance. The contract period for this ordinance will run from March 1st, 2024 through February 28th, 2025. And this ordinance is an emergency as Columbus Public Health has a need to provide HIV-related care and ensure that, tho that those life saving um, HIV treatment and support services are not interrupted. We know that when individuals, any individuals, regardless of HIV status, are able to access whole person holistic health care services, that we see much greater health outcomes, both with mental and physical health. And that is exactly what funds from uh, appropriated through the Ryan White Part A program are able to provide for our friends, neighbors, and loved ones who have an HIV positive status. Access to holistic services like medications, uh, such as antiretroviral medications to keep your viral load undetectable so that you won't be able to transmit the illness to others. Um, are important in, to, in allowing our HIV uh, positive residents to live completely normal, long, and healthy lives. Uh, quick note, anyone who might benefit from these services can contact CPH at 645-CARE. Do any of my colleagues have any comments or questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Cower, Doran's favorite green, Remy White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance that we have tonight is ordinance number 0443-2024 to authorize the Board of Health to enter into initial contracts with qualified vendors, modify those contracts if portions of previously um, appropriated and unencumbered funds are used, and reallocate unused funds by entering into contracts with newly identified and qualified vendors pursuant to federal requirements for the ending the HIV epidemic grant program for the provisions of services allowable under the grant for persons with HIV. HIV or AIDS in Central Ohio to authorize the expenditure of $328,218 from the Health Department Grants Fund to pay the cost thereof, to waive applicable pr provisions of City Code 329, and to declare an emergency. Funds appropriated through this ordinance will enable uh, vendors to provide critical HIV-related services under the Ending the HIV Epidemic Grant Program. This ordinance is an emergency to ensure that there is no lapse in coverage or ability to provide critical medical support services to any persons living with HIV in Central Ohio. Ending the HIV epidemic services are available to any person living with HIV and living in Franklin County. Persons living with HIV can access services that support them in reaching and maintaining viral suppression in which they will not transmit HIV to other individuals. Funds from this ordinance will also allow our partners across the region to support individuals living with HIV by providing other types of holistic services like peer navigation, health insurance navigation, uh, rapid antiretroviral therapy, case management, and linkage to medical and mental health providers. Do any of my colleagues have comments or questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Cower, 
Doran's favor, green, Remy White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. The third ordinance we have tonight is ordinance number 0453-2024 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to enter into contracts with the following vendors, Columbus Neighborhood Health Center, Inc., uh, also known as Primary One Health, Heart of Ohio Family Health Centers, Lower Lights Christian Health Center, Inc., Southeast, Inc., the Ohio State University College of Nursing, and Lutheran Social Services of Central Ohio to provide primary health care and dental services at community-based health centers to authorize the expenditure of $4,299,110 from the Health Special Revenue Fund and to declare an emergency. Funds from this ordinance will allow Columbus Public Health to provide additional funds to support Columbus's six fully designated federally qualified health centers, or FQHCs, which are HRSA-funded health clinics that focus on providing access to high-quality comprehensive care, including preventative health, dental and vision services, mental health and substance use services, including medication-assisted treatment, women's health and OBGYN and care coordination. The federally qualified healthcare center model is one of several evidence-based integrated care models that works to remove barriers and health disparities within our healthcare system. FQHCs are community-based and provide access to affordable healthcare for the uninsured, underinsured, and other medically underserved Columbus residents. However, I do wanna make sure, whoa, that was loud. However, I do wanna make sure and note, um, anyone can actually access uh, care through one of these six or other outside of Columbus FQHCs. Um, I have been a longtime consumer of medical services through FQHCs because I know that every dollar that I spend on healthcare services goes back to help pay for uh, healthcare services of, of someone who might not have insurance or might not be able to access care through a traditional route. So you too can help fund this important work uh, if you are so inclined to. Um, however, with that being said, the funding that we are appropriating today will support Columbus's FQHCs um, and their ability to expand services in 2024 so that we are providing access to more residents so that they can access these vital health care services. Do any of my colleagues have any comments or questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal Coward, Doran's Favor, Green, Remy White, President Harden. Passed. And last but not least, ordinance number 0459-2024 to authorize the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Health Access LLC for Ryan White Part A HIV Care Grant Program for the provision of services allowable under, grant, uh, under the grant for persons with HIV or AIDS in Central Ohio to authorize an expenditure from the Health Department Grants Fund to pay the cost thereof to waive the competitive bidding requirements of Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. This ordinance also approves funds associated with the Ryan White Part A HIV care grant program uh, per Title uh, 26 of the Public Service Health of the Public Health Service Act. Clinical quality management and routine monitoring of activities are required as part of the Ryan White Part A grant program. Uh, we must ensure that HIV health services are being provided to patients under the grant. Uh, guidelines and that they're consistent with the public health service guidelines um, and Health Access LLC provides these critical monitoring services for our program to ensure uh, compliance of fiscal administrative and programmatic duties which is essential in ensuring that we continue to receive these funds uh, from the federal government so that we can continue to provide these important uh, HIV services to Columbus residents. Do any of my colleagues have any comments or questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal Coward, Dorans, Favorite Green, Remy White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have tonight, Council President. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Madam Chair. It's 626, and uh, we have zoning at 630. Uh, I know we have a lot of friends in the audience tonight who uh, want to engage with Council. In the past couple weeks, we've been ending early, so we've been able to get the uh, speaker portion earlier on in the agenda. Um, this is a longer meeting, and uh, we'll start to have longer meetings over the next couple of weeks. Um, so we are going to pause um, uh, and then go into zoning. Um, after a zoning meeting, we'll complete uh, the rest of this meeting, and then we'll open up for, for the speaker portion. So I just want to give everybody who has joined us and maybe um, uh, just got used to us being able to speak before 630, just what's going on tonight. So is there a motion to recess? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Dayal, Coward, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. We are in recess.
Turn it out. Turn it out.
Day Ock Howard, Doran's favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Can I go get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ock Howard, Doran's favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Doran's chairs that committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Before we begin tonight's zoning agenda, first a little bit of housekeeping with the clerk. Please read the numbers of legislation in the zoning committee this evening that require a waiver of second reading. 04, 0485-2024, 0502-2024, and 0512-2024. Thank you, Clerk. I now move to waive second reading on those uh, items read aloud. <coughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Waived. Thank you. Um, now allow me to briefly explain our current rules pertaining to speaking before council on rezonings and variances. We only hear a staff presentation for ordinance that have a disapproval from a recommended body or if we have a public speaker signed up to speak against an ordinance. Uh, this evening we received four public speaker slips. Uh, however, based on, on our understanding, only one of those uh, speakers legally meets the criteria to speak on a council variance. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the city attorney's office to speak uh, regarding the criteria for speaking uh, specifically on council variances, which is different than rezonings. Thank you, President Pro Tem Dorans. Um, as, as you have just indicated, council variances are a little bit different than rezoning ordinances. Rezoning ordinances are similar to any other legislative act of the city council, and as such, if the city council chooses, you may entertain public speakers um, who can provide input on passage of those particular pieces of legislation. Council variances, however, with uh, very few exceptions, are quasi-adjudicatory actions Council is sitting as in judgment to determine whether or not a particular applicant does or does not meet specified criteria, and that's very different from a legislative act that council typically engages in. As a result, um, those hearings uh, require that the council consider only substantive, reliable, and probative evidence, and that's why you often will receive into evidence the staff report uh, from the department. That's the kind of evidence that is used to make a determination as to whether or not an applicant meets the CAT criteria to obtain a variance. However, uh, testimony that is more general in nature, that doesn't, is not specific to a unique harm that is experienced by an abutting homeowner and or a homeowner that lives nearby the particular uh, ap applied uh, residence, applied uh, property, uh, would not constitute probative, substantive, and reliable evidence, and therefore it is disfavored. For that reason, uh, the city attorney's office has recommended to the council that there not be public hearing, or public comment, I should say, uh, related to council requests for a variance because it is, in fact, a different kind of hearing entirely. Thank you for that uh, very detailed explanation. Um, you know, we, of course, want to encourage as much uh, public comment discourse regarding things that are coming before the zoning committee. However, we are limited uh, specifically when it is a council variance based upon that advice from the city attorney's office. And thank you again for uh, relaying that here this evening. Um, again, speaking to that, all speakers on the council variance, including city staff, area commission, applicants, and members of the public, will be sworn in before they give testimony because of that uh, educative uh, aspect to those types of legislation. Um, representatives of the area commission and applicants are always able to speak in an ordinance and do not need to uh, fill out a speaker slip. On the advice of the city attorney's office, I will now swear in city staff. Please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to pains or penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. Thank you. Please let the record reflect that Tim Dietrich from the Department of Building and Zoning Services and uh, Daniel Bleschman from the Department of Public Service has been sworn in. First, we have Ordinance 0469 2024 to grant a variance provisions of Section 3332.037 R2F Area Residential District 3332.19 Fronting 3332.25 Maximum Side Yard Required and 3332.26 uh, C1 Maximum Side Yard Permitted, 3332.27 Rear Yard and 3332.28 Side and Rear Yard Obstruction of the Columbus City Codes are properly located at 165 East Deschler Avenue to allow a single unit dwelling at the rear single unit dwelling uh, on one lot with reduced development standards, the R2F residential district. The site consists of a single unit dwelling in German Village. A council variance is required because the R2F district does not allow two 
two single unit dwellings on one lot, while the applicant proposes to build a carriage house above the, the existing garage. Uh, this proposal has approval from city staff and the German Village Area Commission. Do my colleagues have questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the staff report and do evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. Next move to adopt the fines of staff as the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And next move to amend uh, to emergency. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Amend it. Thank you. And next I move for passage as amended. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 0485 2024 to grant advance provisions of Section 3356.03C for a permitted use of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 2229 2231 East Fifth Avenue to conform an existing two unit dwelling to C4 Commercial District. The site consists of a two unit dwelling in C4 Commercial District. The requested council variance will conform the existing dwelling and will alleviate difficulties with obtaining financing and complying with banking institutional policies. A council variance is required because the C4 District does not allow ground floor residential uses. The proposal has approvals from city staff and the North Central Area Commission. Do my colleagues some questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept this entire, the staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Thank you, Ms. Calderro. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Thank you. Uh, next, I move to adopt the fines of staff as the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage as amended. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Thank you. We next have ordinance 05 uh, 2024 to grant advanced variance provisions of section 3332.035 R3, R3 residential district 3312.49 required parking 3332.13 R3 area district uh, requirements 3332.19 fronting and 3332.27 rear yard a like Columbus City Codes plot, property located at uh, 920 Brighton Road to conform a two single unit dwelling on uh, one lot with reduced development standards in the R3 residential district. The site is developed with a single unit dwelling and a vacant rear carriage house dwelling. The requested council variance will conform the existing dwelling to allow the carriage house to be restored and occupied. A council variance is required because the current R3 district only allows a single unit dwelling per lot. The proposal has approvals from city staff and the Near East Area Commission. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. Next move to adopt the finance of staff as the finance of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. Uh, and finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance 0504. Um, to grant advance provisions of section 3332.039 R4, a residential district of the Columbus City Codes, probably located at 2121 Vilma Avenue to allow a private athletic fields and other associated uses in the R4 residential district. The site consists of two portions of parking lots and private athletic facilities adjacent to Historic Crew Stadium. The requested council variance will allow for the construction of additional athletic fields. Uh, staff supports the proposal as it will introduce non-incompatible uses to the area and will aid in the preparation for the Major League Soccer All-Star Game in July of 2024. Um, do I make colleagues for questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm mo first moved to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. Next, I move to adopt the fines of staff, the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Ockauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. 
Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0512-2024 to grant a variance from provisions of Section 3332.035, R3 Residential District, 3332.05A4 Area District with lot width requirements, 3332.25 Maximum Side Yard Required, 3332.26 Minimum Side Yard Permitted, and 3332.38. Uh, G, private garage is the Columbus City Code for the property located at 1175 Franklin Avenue to allow two-unit dwelling for the deuce development standards in the R3 residential district. The site currently consists of an undeveloped parcel in the R3 residential district. The requested council variance will allow the applicant to construct a two-unit dwelling with a detached garage. A council variance is required because the R3 district prohibits two-unit dwellings. Uh, the proposal has approval from city staff and the nearest area commission. Uh, we did receive one public speaker slip tonight who is opposed uh, to this application at this time. So we'll hear a staff presentation from Mr. Dietrich from the Department of Building and Zoning Services uh, to add to any of my additional comments. Mr. Dietrich, floor is yours. Thank you, Chair Dorans, uh, President Harden, members of council. The site consists of an undeveloped parcel in the R3 residential district. The requested council variance will allow the applicant to construct a two-unit dwelling with a detached garage. Uh, a council variance is required because the R3 district prohibits two-unit dwellings. The request includes variances for lot width, side yards, and garage height. The site is located within the planning boundaries of the Near East Area Plan, but does not include a land use recommendation for this location. Staff supports the request as it is consistent with the existing residential development pattern of the neighborhood, including existing multi-unit dwellings and numerous duplexes along Franklin Avenue. Additionally, the requested variance will not add an incompatible use to the area, and therefore City Department's recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Any questions from my colleagues for the Department at this time? Seeing none, I will invite uh, the applicant to the podium, um, Mr. Michael um, Mahaney. Come on down. I will uh, swear you in when you get to the podium. Please raise your right hand and be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, that you shall answer and pain to penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Floor is yours, sir. Uh, yes, I'm the uh, property owner and applicant for this new construction project. Um, as the City of Columbus already revealed, it is going to be a two-unit uh, building on an, R3 process, on an R3 parcel that isn't otherwise uh, zoned for that. Um, <clears throat> but the biggest thing is that except for the contiguous properties to the left and the right, the east and the west, every single house on this block to the north and to the south is a multifamily unit property. Um, also, uh, two parcels to the west, um, so the ones that you can't really see on the screen, um, the double parcels have just been zoned for uh, seven unit uh, townhomes. So again, it kind of goes with the flow of the street that the majority of the houses um, are, are multi-unit. Um, properties and uh, this won't be built for a rental perspective. These will be individual condos that will be a for sale product. Um, so with that said, I believe it's gonna be built and finished to a slightly higher standard, um, but it's gonna actually add to the housing stock of the neighborhood rather than being rentals. It's gonna be a, a for sale product. Um, otherwise, the other variances um, are standard side yard setbacks, slot areas, things like that, so. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions from council members to the applicant at this time? Seeing none, thank you. Um, as I mentioned, we did have one public speaker slip for this ordinance, Mr. Uh, Timothy Curtis. Mr. Curtis, are you with us? Mr. Curtis, welcome to council. Please uh, go to the podium and I'll swear you in real quick. Um, please raise, raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you should answer in a pencil penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Floor is yours, sir. Uh, my name is Tim Curtis. I live at 1173 Franklin Avenue with the adjacent property. I'm not, I'm not fundamentally opposed to this. It's a nice lot and should have something on it. The thing that brought this to my attention, I haven't had a chance to address it since the initial hearing on the property site took place while I was not around. Um, primarily, it's just the, the side yard uh, area being altered to kind of make room for a two-unit building on a property that looks like it should be, you know, basically one single family home. I'm just worried about the excavation so close to the foundation of my home, it being kind of an older house. It's not even in, the, I think it's probably 1890s. I don't know what happens if there's a problem with my foundation, if I have any kind of recourse or if it just is something I have to bear. Um, there's a door that faces that property that probably won't be of much use anymore after this. If, if depending on the encroachment. 
Um, that's probably the wrong word. I mean, there's going to be a house there, and I think that's fine. Um, there's some underwater, or I should say some underground drainage systems that we had in place, and again, I'm just worried about the excavation causing any difficulties that I might have to bear. Um, and let's see, I guess, I, again, I'm happy to live where I live, and I think it's nice to see places being built that are going to bring up the neighborhood, or I should say just fill up the neighborhood. Um, I just haven't had to deal with any kind of construction on either side of me. I don't know what, uh, what recourse I'll have if something goes wrong. Sure. So I know these are pretty standard. But yeah. it's the first time I got to talk about it. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Curtis, for being here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite the applicant to come back up to address some of those concerns. Uh, and I do want to mention, um, from a permitting standpoint, so they'll have to go through the standard Billing Zoning Services compliance review for this. Um, you know, I'm certainly, you know, um, that is a sort of independent process from council. So tonight we're dealing with the, the variance and then going going through sort of the building process is, is through, through through that department. Um, and my staff, if they haven't already, is happy to connect you with folks over there to make sure that you know exactly what, what is going, going to happen and when um, to make sure that, uh, again, you know, you have confidence in whatever's about to occur next to you, um, that you're just well informed about what that process is. Great, great. That, that's all. Great. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Thanks. Yep. Do want to invite the applicant back up. Yep. Um, so two things I heard with the, uh, the excavation and the underground water management, otherwise known as a drain tile that brings water around from the house. Um, in regards to the excavation, it's pretty standard for an urban infill lot for us to dig down. Uh, we're only digging six and a half feet underground, and we're over digging our foundation by two feet. So if we're having a three foot setback from our property line and we're over digging by two feet, there's still going to be one foot of earth until it hits the property line. In addition to that, the neighbor is about three and a half feet from his foundation to the property line. So there's gonna be plus or minus four, four and a half feet of earth. That still is the difference between his basement and the proposed dig. Um, so with that said, that's still a substantial amount of earth that's gonna keep his foundation fine and, and shoring and stuff like that. Uh, in regards to the water management, uh, we are also gonna have drain tiles. So any of our gutters and water system is gonna be dumped to the street. Um, so it's not gonna be dumping onto his property. We're not gonna have elbow gutters that you know discharge water or anything like that. Um, if his drain tile just so happens to be on the other side of the property line, obviously we'll have to deal with that, maybe tie into ours, the existing and discharge water. It's not really a big deal. Um, but if it just so happens to be over the property line, obviously I can't really change that. Uh, we'll just have to you know, fix it or figure out a solution as is. Um, but our digging won't affect anything on his property. Um, shovels, either by excavation or manual, won't be on his property. Um, so with that said, I think it's something that I can manage pretty well with him that we're not going to really disturb his, his soil, his foundation, or his water management. Uh, any questions, council members, the applicant? See none. Thank you, sir. Um, so as I mentioned, I think some of the concerns of Mr. Chris, and I want to thank you for coming down are, are better addressed through the building process that aren't necessarily a variance concern here for us uh, this evening. Uh, based upon the, the support from staff and the Near East Area, Area Commission, uh, and certainly as we all know, the housing crisis that exists in Columbus, uh, providing additional density uh, on a single lot uh, helps to chip away at that lack of supply that exists in Columbus. Um, so at this point, I, I do think it's uh, healthy for us to move forward with this, but again, gonna ask my staff to make sure that Mr. Curtis is well informed about the processes at Department of Building and Zoning Services as this project moves forward. So uh, I first move to accept the staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorrance, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. Next, I move to adopt the finance of staff, the finance of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorrance, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorrance, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you, Council President. That's all we have in tonight's zoning agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Banks, Timberosa, De Padilla, De Akauer, Dorrance, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Uh, the zoning meeting is adjourned. Just to keep everybody in the loop, so we're going to allow for the directors to come back in. We will start up the uh, regular meeting that we just paused for the zoning committee, uh, in, say, in five minutes. Um, hopefully, we can get through the rest of our agenda in the next 20 Minutes, 25, 20 minutes, is that, is that aggressive? Next 25 minutes, but then we'll, 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 be, we'll be soon to uh, the, a portion where we can speak.
So please call the roll and reconvene meeting number 11. Banks, Timber, Rosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Doris. <laughs> Sorry. Favor Green, Remy Weiss, President Harden. We are reconvened. The next committee to come before council is the Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilman Remy. Councilman, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President. Tonight, I have three ordinances in the Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee. The first ordinance is 0404-2024 to authorize the Director of Public Safety on behalf of the Division of Police to modify the current contract with ProTow Inc. for the continuation of towing management services to authorize an expenditure of $1,800,000 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. The Division of Police is responsible for the safety and the welfare of the traveling public on all public streets, state routes, interstates, and waterways, as well as those endangered by parking violations, accidents, or abandoned vehicles and watercraft within the metropolitan Columbus area as well as on city-owned land. In an effort to improve the transportation network and access innovative technology, the city sought a smart solution to towing management services. Four proposals were received by the bid closing date of uh, November 2017 and the evaluation committee determined that ProTow was the highest qualified bidder. It is now necessary to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Service to modify the current contract with ProTow Inc. for the continuation of towing management through August 31st, 2024. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing that, I move for passage. Banks Tim Barossa de Padilla de Acauer Dorns Favor Green Remy White President Harden. Next ordinance is 405-2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Safety on behalf of the Division of Police to enter into contract with Veracity's Public Benefit Corporation for the training of officers in forensic experiential trauma interview methodology to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize an expenditure of $128,205 from the Police Continual Education Fund and Entrepreneurial Training Fund to appropriate funds in the Entrepreneurial Training Fund Program Fund and to declare an emergency. Deputy Director Jean Gardella, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about the forensic exper experiential trauma interview uh, technique, otherwise known as FETI, and why it is critical and why there is also a request for a uh, bid waiver? Yes, uh, Pr President Harden, Chair Remy, members of council. Uh, first of all, this is a trademark program by Veritas, and um, we've not done this before. The importance is to be able to gather information and in a better situation when you're dealing with people that are experiencing high stress and trauma. And we believe that this will uh, provide us more information. It, it is not, uh, this is not a, um, uh, to um, train, uh, train detectives, to um, collect information to, for an accused people. It is to provide them with training so that they are better prepared to deal with individuals who are experiencing this stress and trauma. Uh, as I said, this information, this, this technique is um, trademarked, and if it proves to be valuable in the future, then we would look to perhaps engage further contracts in the future. So I appreciate Council's uh, approval of this ordinance tonight. Thank you very much, Deputy Director. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. And the last ordinance I have in public safety this evening is 493-2024 to authorize and direct the Director of Pu Department of Public Safety to enter into contract with the Franklin County Board of Commissioners and expend funds for use of the Franklin County Correction Centers for the housing of City of Columbus prisoners to authorize the expenditure of $2 million from the general fund and to declare an emergency. Franklin County contracts with several local governments, including the City of Columbus, for housing of prisoners charged with municipal code violations. The contracts were established under Ohio Revised Code Section 1905-30. The City of Columbus and Franklin County entered into a contract under CT15777 that charges a per diem amount for the housing of City of Columbus prisoners. This contract, signed in 1994 by the County Commissioners in the City, is amended periodically only for per diem increases. This year's per diem rate of $104 per day is an increase of $4 over last year. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Banks Tim Barbosa de Padilla de Acauer Dorns Favor Green Remy White President Harden. Council President, that is all I have in public safety and criminal justice this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
The next committee to come before council is the Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee. Uh, Councilmember Weiss chairs that committee. Councilmember the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Tonight in Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, we have seven ordinances, four of which address universal term contract purchase agreements. These agreements simply set the rate for the purchase of goods and services that each department may need throughout the year. So I'm going to go going into the background on those unless my colleagues have questions or comments. Uh, first, we have Ordinance 0183-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate universal term contract purchase agreement for the purchase of material supplies and services for the Division of Water and to authorize the expenditure of $2,373,000 from the Water Operating Fund. I'll pause here for any questions, comments from my colleagues. Hearing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa, De Padilla, De Acauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have 0184-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term contract purchase agreements for the purchase of materials and supplies for the Division of Power and to authorize the expenditure of $4,500,000 from the Electricity Operating Fund. Pause here for any questions or comments from my colleagues. Hearing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Right. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 019-2024 to authorize the city attorney to file complaints in order to appropriate and accept the remaining fee simple in lesser real estate necessary to timely complete the Petzinger Road Stormwater Systems Improvement Project and to authorize an expenditure of uh, $1,200 from the Storm Sewer Bond Fund. This ordinance will allow the city to acquire property in the vicinity of Petzinger Road between Courtright and Gaylord Place in order to improve and repair portions of public sewer infrastructure. Pause here, see if there are any questions or comments from my colleagues. Hearing and seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0199-2024 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to modify the Professional Engineering Services Agreement with Hatch Associates Consultants, Inc. for the HAP Premium Water Plant Concrete Rehabilitation Project to authorize an amendment to the 2023 Capital Improvements Budget to authorize the appropriation and transfer of cash from the Water System Reserve Fund to the Water Fresh Water Market Rate Fund and to authorize the appropriation of funds and expenditures of $1,925,000 from the Water Fresh Water Market Rate Fund to pay for the contract modification. Uh, the purpose of this project is to rehabilitate concrete and other mechanical structural items that have deteriorated due to age, service, and weather conditions. Pause there, see if there are any questions or comments from my colleagues. Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 02207-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from the ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term contract purchase agreements for the purchase of materials and supplies for the Division of Power and to authorize the expenditure of $2,300,000 from the Electricity Operating Fund. Pause there, see if any questions or comments from my colleagues. Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorns, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Perfect. Next, we have Ordinance 0289-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term contract purchase agreements for the purchase of materials, supplies, and services for the Division of Sewerage and Drainage, Southerly Wastewater Treatment Plant, and to authorize the expenditure of $3,146,000 from the Sewerage Operating Fund. Pause there, see if any questions or comments from my colleagues. Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Acauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. 
Thank you. And last, we have Ordinance 0442-2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Utilities to modify contracts with Ohio Mulch Supply, Inc. and Quasar Energy Group, LLC, North Tree Farm for the Deep Row Hybrid Poplar Tree Farm Number 2 program to authorize the expenditure of $3,600,000 from the Sanitary Sewerage Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance continues the city's commitment to 100% beneficial use of its biosolids. The need to modify and increase the funding for these contracts speaks to the success of the initiative. However, I would like uh, the department to tell us more. Uh, Direct Deputy Director Aubrey, could you just speak a little bit more about this ordinance, please? Uh, good evening, President Hardin, Council Chair White, other members of uh, Council. The City of Columbus contracts with two land reclamation tree farms these once uh, strip mine sites have biosolids placed in trenches of the mine spoils, and uh, wh which are then planted with fast-growing deep row poplar hybrid trees. These poplar trees are harvested in years seven to ten, um, and are turned into a sustainable mulch, mulch product. Uh, the reason for the cost increase over previous years is we're actually, um, they're act in order to meet our 100% biosolids reuse, they're taking more biosolids, and also there's an increase in uh, trucking costs. So those add to the cost increase over previous years, and happy to answer any other questions. Thank you very much, Deputy Director. Any questions from my colleagues? Uh, seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you, and that is all I have for my committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you have uh, one in? Oh, sorry, I guess I'll uh, move to rules and reference, ordinance 0327-2024. Um, and this ordinance is to amend section 1145.88 of chapter 1140, 1145 sewer use regulations of the Columbus City Codes to authorize the director of the Department of Public Utilities to access and take corrective actions on public sanitary service mains and manholes in those areas served by the city's sanitary sewer system where the Blueprint Columbus inflow and infiltration program will be implemented. Obviously, no, based on the title, that is related to our Blueprint Columbus, but I did ask Deputy Director Aubrey to explain why this code change is needed and how it will help uh, the Blueprint Columbus project. Uh, good evening again, President Hardin, Chair White, other members of Council. Um, thank you for this legislation tonight. Um, we have, as part of our Blueprint Columbus project, we line mainline sewers, and that's been part of uh, one of our pillars. And as we move into um, areas of town where sewers are in the rear yards, we're finding challenges with fences and uh, uh, sheds and things like that in the rear yard, which limit our ability to get to the sewer. This will allow us at, to work with the property owner and get access through not an easement, but the private property so that we can continue to work on the inflow and infiltration into our system. And just to confirm, Deputy Director, we won't enter their property until there is a conversation with the property owner? Correct. We give them notice a couple times and have conversations with them as well. Thank you so much. Any questions, comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. All right, now I'm officially done. Thank, Thank you. you. And that did only take like 20, 20 minutes. So, <laughs> um, If seeing no further business come for counsel, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barbosa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned.